Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Good morning. How's it going? Good morning. Very good, thanks. Yeah, and yourself. All is good. I'm, I'm a bit fearful for here for the weekend. To be honest with you, um, my main thought last weekend was that watching Glasgow, it really doesn't matter who wins the second semi final. They look just so impressive. Yeah, I had that sense as well last week when they were um, they were really clinical and their attacking mindset in in um, the last kind of eight or nine matches has been phenomenal. I think they've. They've been scoring, free flowing. It's it's it, it's you could you could buy into it too much and say that like Leinster down tools six weeks ago, um, they were already couldn't be caught guaranteed home semi final. Glasgow beat them a couple of weeks ago. Um, they've been racking up big scores and everyone they've played recently, and and that would make you think it doesn't matter who wins between Munster and Leinster. Um, it's going to be very difficult to beat yeah. Glasgow in 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 in, um, in Glasgow. That hasn't changed. It's going to be difficult to beat them anyway. But I think when you look at the the probable Leinster team that'll that'll be named later on today and the quality they have and the experience they have, um, they'll I think they'll be able to cope with them. Um, it's about going after them up front and and checking is there any are they brittle in any way? Do they have the the fight are they physical enough, and this is a different test for Glasgow. Dave Rennie will know that himself. That um, Leinster are a championship side. They have a lot of quality, pedigree, a lot of hardness and resilience within their group. That it won't be like Glasgow have had in the last eight matches where they've kind of steamrolled teams and blitzed them. Like that's the, that was the thing. Them, yeah. the, that was the yeah. thing in the Ulster match that they absolutely blitzed them, and Ulster never really looked in it. And, and uh, yeah, like in a lot of ways, you forget that. Saracens were the team to knock this Glasgow side out of Ulster. Like you wonder why they weren't there in the final shake-up. They were beaten by maybe one of the greatest teams they've ever played um, at a European level. Like this is, I don't know. It's on the face of it, it's it, yeah. When you look at the form, you think right, Glasgow are irresistible when they get going. Then I kind of went back and I looked at some clips from that that Saracens game in the quarterfinals, and that's what Saracens. Was it double scores? Yeah, it was 56-27, the final yeah. score, and um, they got a couple of consolations. They started the game really well against Harrisons, but just the power and the strength, way more so than what Saracens did to Leinster in that final quarter of that game. So how do Leinster go about it, I suppose? Well, they have to they defend well. Um, you can't slip off tackles, you've got to stop the offloads. Um, scrum line-out has to be good. And uh, and be physical. It, it's it's something that if Glasgow get on the front foot and they get a couple of scores and get a bit of momentum going, they're very very dangerous. Adam Hastings has been brilliant for him this year. Um, you know Finn Russell left last year and there was a gap and a void left after he went. And Adam Hastings just the way he plays, um, it suits the style they want to play. And he's. You see a lot of these loopy passes going over the wingers when they come up and in and they score and they seem to stick all their passes. So Leinster have got to put pressure on them and make sure that, you know, they they dislodge the ball, if you like. They stop the passing channels and no better side to do that in Leinster. They, they're they very, very intelligent in the way they defend. Um, they keep a lot of numbers on their feet. Um, they identify when to attack rocks, when not to attack rocks. And... Uh, so they're capable of doing that. So it's it's a completely different ball game here. Um, Le- Glasgow are not going to be running around the place making line bro- breaks willy nilly. It's it's going to be different. They'll know that. So they what for Glasgow's approach probably has to be. Here's everything that's happened in the last few weeks. It's in the locker. It's in the bag. If the game opens up any little bit, if we get a line break, we're mm. fairly cohesive and we're ready, and our enthusiasm and awareness around any sorts of line breaks will be good but we've got to roll up the sleeves they've got to get you know it's the battle up front um healy and furlong and scott and fardy d- d- and james Le- Ryan. Leinster need to make it about that almost for well, sure they? and they've got to hold on to the ball really well and 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 um you know they started very well against saracens over in newcastle where they got the first penalty yeah. and they weathered the storm of of some saracens attack and then they go up and you know before like probably 25, 30 minutes. I can't remember exactly when they score, Furlong scores, but you just got a sense that Sar- uh, Leinster were in a great position themselves, mentally strong. Saracens look deflated. So they've got to make sure that they kind of set the tone early on tomorrow with 
with uh, a physicality and an intensity that maybe Glasgow haven't been used to in the last few weeks. So they want to try and shock them a little bit. I think they will have spoken about that and they'll know how good Leinster are. So mm. it's it's an intriguing one. Um, like is, is, the one thing that, because you've spoken about it and I definitely be of the same view that Leinster and I think you make the broader point about maybe some other Irish teams at the minute need to play a bit of territory, kick in behind, push them into the corners. They're the sort of teams though that it strikes me that they can, they have that capacity to play a bit of barbarian style that yeah, can they are, score from it. Yeah, for sure. And they're, they're narky as well. They have a little bit of an edge to them. So they'll, um, they'll be really up for this and they'll probably get in Leinster's face. So discipline is going to be key as well. How, how Leinster cope with that, that bit of pressure. And um, there's probably more pressure in Leinster um, given the loss in the final and, you know, if they lose this game, they're giving up the Pro 14 as well. Glasgow, um, they've got asked the questions of Glasgow, not stop Glasgow playing, but impose themselves, if that makes sense. So if you go out to stop a team who are... Yeah, who are well, kind that's of a negative very, approach. Yeah, it yeah. is, and it can be dangerous. So Leinster have just got to try and get on the front foot themselves, have a really good set piece, which we know they have, um, get on the front foot, get Robbie Henshaw attacking, um, carrying ball, get, get the ball in Ring Rose's hands, ask the questions themselves and, you know, the way they can recycle the ball and hold on to the ball. But I think that is probably going to be key, how they manage the territory as well. Leinster don't need to play all the rugby here tomorrow. They, you know, Leinster, I think, they just need to play in the right areas and be, play sensible rugby. And then, you know, physically match Glasgow and go, go beyond mm -hmm. that, if you like, because to be fair to them, they've, they've, it's, they're no slouches themselves up front, you know, Johnny Gray, Fagerson's been brilliant for him, Callum Gibbons, the New Zealand seven is very, very strong. Um, they have a lot of good players as well and uh, it'll be really interesting how that game goes. If it opens up completely, um, you think that'll suit Glasgow? And that's no disrespect to Leinster, that they, they can play a brilliant game as well and they love attacking rugby. Mm. But I think Leinster need to just keep it simple tomorrow and uh, grind out with, and frustrate Glasgow a little bit where they're not making these mm. line breaks. Tommy Seymour isn't shooting up the field. Johnson, the centre, isn't, you know, flying around the place. Um, knock them back a little bit and frustrate them. But uh, it's two very, very good sides and the best sides in the, in, in the league this year. You say Leinster need to keep their discipline, which is obviously true. But like you look at that Saracens game and people could say Mara Toje should have got two or three yellow cards in that game. Saracens were definitely the team closer to the edge that day yeah. than Leinster were. Yeah. Could that be seen as an issue? Granted, Jerome Garces had a big say that day. Well, Nigel Owens is refing yeah. tomorrow and I don't think he'll... Uh, I think he'll manage that well because his communication is quite good and... Uh, Glasgow are a, a, a play on the edge. There's no doubt about that, and uh, Leinster will know that. As in, what, what do you mean? They're, they're, they push the boundaries. They're counter rocking a lot. They're like on the bar, on the borderline of league. Very sort of. bo bo borderline, yeah. And look, all teams are starting to do that. It's like in from the side and an edge, sort of, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Pressure here, there, and everywhere. And uh, I think that will um, that was is something Leinster will have to cope with and deal with. And um, <coughs> I don't. I think Nigel Owens will manage that well, and he'd probably have spoken to both sides. But yeah, you assume we, that we were seeing a trend in the game anyway, Adrian, of a lot of offsides and in-your-face yeah. style. I don't understand things. when you see that manifesting itself, right? Because the the communication is what it is, and we see the level of communication that's there long before the game even begins. At yeah. times, the referee can be in camp at some point during the week. There's a discussion that takes place. Surely, if you're Leo Cullen or Stuart Lancaster in this context, you're in Nigel Owens' ear at some point before, way before the game, saying, "Listen, by the way, this is." Look, this is what's going to happen. You need to make sure that that they're not at that. I don't understand in that context how it ever happens. How it ever actually happens yeah, on match but it day. continuously happens. And it does, it's, yeah. um, like some of them are right on the, the mark of uh, getting off the line and when the ball has been passed. But it's, it's, I've said this many times, I think we need to try and introduce something where it's a yard behind the hindmost foot at the breakdown, which will stop this, that's right, yeah. this, this sprinting up. Some people are counter arguing that and saying well that will give the opposition the attack more of a chance to run and get up to speed but I think it'll give the, the attack more of a chance to be evasive and to pass and to move the ball a little bit more um, because we're seeing a lot of collisions right on the game line and Leinster do it Glasgow will do it tomorrow they'll all do it we, the, this, the referee needs more help from his assistants and unless I think it's it, there needs to be a clear guideline and a, and a law change around the breakdown. Um, 
There's many issues around the breakdown with side entries off your feet. That needs Rugby's evolving all the time and it's getting more physical. The gate, more the gate seems to become a grey area. Isn't Listen, it? if you're a referee out there, it's impossible to look left, right, see everything that's yeah. going on. There's so many things happening. And um, that's, 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 that's a real area of t tomorrow that needs to be on, both sides need to be on. And, and then get a bit of, a bit of good fortune, uh, maximise your opportunity. But going back to what I said about Glasgow, they're a very, very good side. They're full of Scottish internationals. Um, they're on the front foot in recent weeks. Leinster are the ones that have got to go and impose themselves here early on, and there's no doubt they can do that. They're a side full of quality. And if they can bring the intensity from the Champions Cup final that they matched and brought themselves, well, I think they'll be you know, they could they could frustrate and upset Glasgow. We we'll know the teams in a few hours as this will be out of date soon, but Sexton start? Yeah, for sure. He's he's um he has to start, I think. Um I thought it was really um it was a risk last week. Ross Bourne, very good player, but they had the confidence to do that. Leo Cullen had the confidence. But they know to they're say, playing against a second tier go. team, they can uh... <laughs> It's hard to put up with him, isn't it? Insufferable. Um, <laughs> it was a weird one, though. I genuinely thought man, it was a bit of yeah, a weird I thought one for it was such a an risk, important game. Yeah, because it was one of those games where we were all kind of going, well, even Leinster people were saying, this is very dangerous, this mm. monster side. Leinster bruised and battered. Um, it's great that they got through it and yeah, well, that's, got that that's exposure. The confidence. Yeah, for sure, because he's a very good player, um, a superb player. And um, to have the confidence for Leo Cullen mm. and Contepomi and Stuart Lancaster to make that decision to say we're going to put him on the bench. Now who knows, he may, may not have trained much at the start of that week because of some Could of the banks and in the background. So yeah. then, yeah. And we know the way the modern day game has gone where a lot of coaches now are going, well look, if you're not on the training field on Tuesday, you're a yeah. risk. Because back in my day, it was a lot of, well if the guy made it to Friday and he didn't train all week, he was fine yeah, if he did the captain's run. Yeah. But now, you know, because of trying to get implement game plans and the structure and all that and stuff. So um, it was a risk, but you know, he comes back in, he brings a wealth of experience and a real steel about him. But the one area I think for Johnny tomorrow is going back to the Luke McGrath, not kicking the ball out at half time, saying, well, we have a confidence to play and we want to play. I just think they need to be careful with that tomorrow because Glasgow are a team that can capitalize on mistakes and they'll be full of that energy tomorrow. Stuart Hogg gets the ball, yeah. Seymour, these guys, very dangerous. So you don't want to be making mistakes in your own half and, and coughing up the ball. Um, so I think tactically and territorially they've got to play smart tomorrow. I wonder if that's like had going to have a bigger impact than we think it is, that Luke McGrath halftime thing. Because my stance on it was that, especially after what Johnny Sexton said afterwards, that it was yeah. the right thing to do. The intention was the correct thing to do. It would be an awful shame if this Leinster team started to become inhibited. Uh, I guarantee you that and I'd be very surprised if they knew that they knew the clock was in the red and said, we're going to keep playing. I bet you they didn't even know it was in the red, but their mentality was to play and go for it, and, uh, which has to be admired. But, you know, Saracens are a much stronger team than Glasgow, and they're, they've proven they're stronger than Leinster physically. Um, it was still a game that Leinster could have, <coughs> if they look back and if they did things differently, they could have won it. Um, but... Yeah, I just think it's, it'll be different against Glasgow if you're going to try and play out from your own 22. There's every chance you can do that. Leinster yeah. can do that. It's much riskier because Saracens were so powerful as a side right across their back line as well. So um, I'm not saying that they shouldn't play. Of course they should play because Leinster are the champions. They're the team on, on, uh, with the pedigree and they've been there, done that. Of Absolutely they should go for it. And they've shown over the years when they hold on to the ball, they can wear the life out of teams and they have enough quality and power um, to, to steamroll teams as well. But just to manage it well, because the last thing they need tomorrow is to give <laughs> any sort of easy scores over to Glasgow, yeah. because if they get a score or two and they get their tails up, they are capable of of causing damage and, and they're capable of doing that tomorrow as well. Who wins it? I think Leinster will win it because I think they have enough experience and, and drive to, to get the job done. But they've got to be very conscious of um, of the dangers. That, and they, look, they will, they'll have watched the games. I just think this is going to be a different game for Glasgow. Mm. And what all that confidence they've built up over the last game, scoring between 30 and 50 points every time they played. 
it's going to be different and, and they're not going to do that tomorrow. They're not going to score that much. So I just think Leinster slightly, but um, they're, they're a serious threat to Leinster, yeah. uh, Glasgow. I'd, given it's on in, in Glasgow as well, and they'll have huge motivation, obviously, to win a final, but Stuart Hogg is leaving. Um, maybe the Leo Cullen comments this earlier in the week about the Glasgow players being Rangers fans. Maybe that'll irk them a little bit. But uh, Leinster are certainly good enough to do the job, to get the job done. But um, they've got to go and perform tomorrow now and play well because this is a good Glasgow side. Do it for Munster, is that what you're saying? After beating Do it for them? Irish rugby, Adrian. Stop stop trying to bring drag drag us Munster people into your kind of smart comments. Speaking um, of... Um, speaking for, of for, for Leinster, I think, look, I, I even said it on Breakfast Radio this morning, um, Given what happened last year in 2018 and the confidence and the high that all the Irish rugby players are on, if Leinster were to lose this, you'd have the disappointment of Six Nations, Champions Cup, Pro 14, Munster's probably pessimism that's hanging around there at the moment, Ulster kind of limping out in the semi-final last week. Ulster, in, in, in a sense, will be probably more glass half full scenario given where they were last year. Mm. Connacht a pretty positive season getting into the Champions Cup again. But I think for the Ulster, the, the Leinster and Munster players, they would kind of be going to ending up going to a World Cup with a bit of negative yeah. baggage in the head. So I think from from an Irish perspective uh, for a World Cup, um, it'd be good to have Le those Leinster players actually reinforce yeah. reinforcing their confidence. Um, a couple of quick things to touch on before we let you off. Uh, Devin is for our RFU performance director has been out and about some interesting stuff to say. I don't know if you've seen much of these quotes this morning, but stuff about the future of the women's game, uh, stuff about Rob Kearney's uh, contract negotiations, and like he, it's grabbed a lot of headlines. Ireland must make semi-final for this to be a success. Like, it seems like a statement of the obvious to me in some ways. It is, yeah, and uh, and I suppose that that would be part of his remit and his own goal goal setting um, to to get to semi final. Mm. Um, we all know that. Um, I think it's it's. Is there anything that he said that you saw in any of them that like it's all fairly measured kind of? Yeah, it is pretty measured. I think he's done a very good job, and I think he's been a success. Um, he hasn't. Um, the, the the provinces have given out at times that. And I think they can all have a, well, particularly Ulster, Leinster, Munster can all have a, a bit of a quib at, at different situations where he blocked moves or didn't allow guys come in. Um, Leinster probably more recently with the Joey Carberry um, going to Munster. Um, Ulster with the Rune Pienaar thing, that, that was probably the most high profile one. Yeah. But it worked out incredibly well with John Cooney going there. And um, so all, I think- All look like good calls now. Yeah, well, I think Leinster are probably the ones who are probably the most frustrated losing mm. Joey Carberry last year and then Jordy Murphy. I think it's it's still down to individual choices. I don't think David Nisifor or Joe Schmidt at any stage have said to a player, you have to go or else. He did seem to be saying that to that either uh, Joey Carberry or Ross Byrne last year. Didn't seemed he? to be. I know, yeah, look at so, He's probably giving them good no, advice. Listen, I mean, if, if Joe sits you down and he goes, listen, he, he can suggest I think you might. Yeah, yeah, he can exactly. suggest it. And if Joe like, says that to me, I'm but like, look, ultimately, oh, if a player decides to stay where they're they are and, and they have a contract in that province, I think that I, I genuinely believe that that would be respected. And I think it'd be, it'd be the same scenario for anyone. Um, ideally, like we said, the, the, if there's X number of players in one position in, in one province, mm. ideally from an Irish point of view is to move them around. So he's brought in that kind of policy and that mentality of player, a bit more player moving, top players. Mm. We've seen it with younger players a lot over the years particularly guys going to Connacht to get an opportunity yeah. and the success of them coming back, Owen Redden, Sean Cronin, these guys um, who, who became top class internationals. So I think David Nosifor is, and, and it's, it was a very good appointment because it was giving control to someone and it was taking it away from your committee type decisions where everyone has an opinion. He's a strong voice and has that authority to make those decisions and be, you know, doesn't please everyone every time. I'm sure all the provinces are knocking on his door over the years to sign this guy, that guy, and look for funds. And uh, his job is to try and have the provinces strong yeah. and in turn has the national team strong and bring players through. So I think he's done a very good job and uh, um, I think it's good that he's there for the next couple of years again. The new kit, yeah or nay? 
I like it, yeah. I like it. Um, you wouldn't be want to be carrying any excess weight. That's the alternate jersey. Yeah. Um, why? Why wouldn't you want to be carrying any excess? Well, weight? I saw I saw Joy the one on Joy Carberry, and it was glued to him. And I was just thinking, if my kind of, <laughs> if you were carrying any little uh, excess be, around the belly, yeah. like it wouldn't be great. You Not know, great the props hate the tight yeah. jerseys. They hate the yeah. tight jerseys. You know, but it's a nice kit. It's a nice jersey. The uh, the away the away one, the alternate one is nearly nicer. It's uh, very tasty. I mean, the blue in it probably is the uh, thing that's attracting me there, Quinny, as you can tell. But nice, isn't it? Yeah, tasty. It is, yeah, to be fair. What do you think, on? Colors anymore? I'm a, I'm a home jersey guy, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the home jersey. Do you want nice. to mean uh, uh, just in this instance? Just uh, the, it's a, it's, a much, it's a much nicer jersey. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, uh, Shall we buy you one? I'd Would you wear it? Have have your boys Connacht got a new jersey out yet? No. <laughs> on that note, as every week, as every predictable as uh, night follows uh, day. <laughs> Quinny, thanks, William. Wear a Connacht man, though. Tell the truth. Thanks very much, Quinny, for coming in. I'm going to stop thanking you now if you keep at that shite. Um, but thanks a lot for coming in. We'll see how your prediction goes. Uh, Glasgow at the weekend.